Many of you have learned in your physics class that the speed of a traveling wave is equal to the frequency of the wave multiplied by its wavelength. It is easy to apply. You just need to plug in the numbers. But do you understand it? Do you understand where this formula comes from? We will look into this together and have fun with it by measuring the speed of light using a piece of cheese and a microwave oven. Let's imagine a wave which is traveling along a rope. In the illustration, you can see snapshots of that wave propagating along the rope at different times. Look at what particle A is doing. You see that when the wave passes through, the particle does not move left or right. It moves up and down. It is oscillating. On the first snapshot, the particle is at rest. When the wave arrives, the particle goes up, reaches a maximum height, then goes down, passes its original equilibrium point, continues its way down, reaches another maximum of negative value, before going up again and passing once more the equilibrium point. And then the whole cycle starts again. Look at how far the wave has traveled during the time particle A completed a full cycle. The wave traveled one wavelength. The wavelength is usually represented by the Greek letter lambda. The time taken for the wave to move by one wavelength is the same than the duration of an oscillation cycle of particle A. This is called a period and is usually represented by the letter big T. You all know that speed is the distance covered per unit time. Speed is distance over time. V equals little d over little t. So when the time is a full period, how much distance is covered by the wave? Well, we just saw that. The distance covered by the wave during a period is one wavelength. So if we write that little t equals period and little d equals wavelength, we can write down speed equals wavelength over period, right? V equals lambda over big T. Let's introduce the concept of frequency. What is frequency? Frequency is the number of cycles that occur in one second. So if you take a time interval of one second and you divide it by the duration of one cycle, which is a period, then you will get the number of cycles in one second, which is the frequency. So you can write frequency equals 1 over period, or little f equals 1 over big T. V equals lambda over big T, or if you prefer, V equals lambda multiplied by 1 over big T. It's basically the same thing. By replacing 1 over big T with the frequency, we get V equals f multiplied by lambda, which is the equation we were looking for. This equation is one of the most fundamental equations in physics. It is so important that it is called the wave equation. If you are studying physics right now, I strongly recommend that you learn this equation by heart. This formula works for all waves. Longitudinal waves, like sound. Electromagnetic waves, like light. Gravitational waves. And even standing waves like the waves on a guitar string. Let's have a little fun with this wave equation. I will show you how to measure the speed of light in your kitchen using a microwave oven and a slice of cheese. But first, a little bit of theory so that you can understand how things work. Microwaves are electromagnetic waves, so their speed is the speed of light. If you measure the speed of a microwave, you measure the speed of light. On the back of a microwave oven, there should be indicated the frequency of the microwaves that are produced. So if we could measure the wavelengths of the microwaves which are produced, we could figure out the speed of light using the wave equation. The waves generated in a microwave oven are standing waves. 
That means that the waves are confined by boundaries. In our case, these boundaries are the inner sides of the microwave oven. Standing waves do not travel out of the boundaries of their confined space. That's why we say they are standing waves and not traveling waves. Here is a representation of a standing wave on a string with boundaries, like for example a guitar string. Notice how some of the particles of the string are oscillating with the largest amplitude. These positions are called antinodes. Some other particles oscillate with a small amplitude, and some are not even oscillating at all. The positions where the particles remain at rest are called nodes. What interests us here is that the distance between two antinodes is equal to half of the wavelength. Now, what happens when you put food in a microwave oven? The standing wave which is generated drives the water molecules in the food. The water molecules oscillate, they gain kinetic energy, and this translates, at the human scale, as a higher temperature. And at the cheese scale, as getting melted. At the antinodes, the water molecules in the food will oscillate more. So, at the antinodes, the food will get hot faster. So, the idea is to place a slice of cheese in the microwave, turn it on for a very short while, a few seconds for example. The positions where the cheese start to melt will be the antinodes. You just need to measure the distance between the melted spots and the value you obtain will give you a value corresponding to half of the wavelength. Now let's do it. In order to measure the speed of light at home, you will need a microwave oven, you will need a plate, you will need a ruler, and you will need some sliced cheese. Usually microwave ovens, they have a system inside where uh, the microwave plate is being rotated. You don't want that. You want to deactivate this if you can. If you cannot, like on this one, which is really a basic microwave, what you can do is you reverse the microwave plate so that there's no grip to the rotation motor. And by placing the plate like this, when you turn on the microwave, it will not rotate. Okay. Now, you place the cheese in the plate. Here. And I place it there. And I'll run it, say, for six seconds, six or seven seconds at full blast. Let's have a look. Now I see molten here, molten there, molten there, molten there. So most probably these are antinodes. Remember here in 2D we're not on a single string. What I'm interested in is to have a range of the distance between the antinodes. I take my ruler and I'm going to consider the distance here, measure all these distances. So here I have about five and a half. This is about seven, this is about five and a half, and this is around six and a half. So if I take the average, I'm at six plus minus one, right? Something like this. Now we know that the distance between two antinodes of the standing wave occurring inside the microwave oven is around six centimeters. What about the frequency of the wave? If I look at the back of the microwave, I see a label with all the technical specifications. And somewhere on the label, you'll see a frequency. And that's the frequency here of the microwave. So 2450 megahertz. That is 2.45 gigahertz. That is 2.45 by 10 to the 9 hertz. We just calculated the distance between two antinodes. 6 centimeters plus minus 1 centimeter. Let's put it in meters. 
0.06 meters plus minus 0.01 meter. From that, you can calculate the wavelength of the standing waves because it will be twice the distance between two empty nodes. So here, 0.12 plus minus 0.02 meters. Now, to prove this to you, I can actually do a quick uncertainty calculation based on this formula. Delta lambda over lambda is equal to delta d over d. Therefore, delta lambda is equal to lambda by delta d over d. That is 0.12 multiplied by 0.01 divided by 0.06, and you get 0.02 meters that I put here. But, so we got the wavelengths, right? What about the frequency? We just read it on the label at the back of the microwave. We found 2450 megahertz which is 2.45 gigahertz, or 2.45 by 10 to the 9 hertz. Now that we have the wavelengths and the frequency, it's a piece of cake to calculate the speed of the wave, using the wave equation V equals F lambda. Microwaves are electromagnetic waves, so basically microwaves are light. So when we calculate the speed of the microwave, we are actually calculating the speed of light. So, frequency, 2.45 by 10 to the 9. Wavelength, 0 0.12. Let me find my calculator. I've got 0 0.12 by 2.45. That gives me 0 0.294 by 10 to the 9, which is 2.94 by 10 to the 8 meters per second. Pretty close. <laughs> the speed of light is 3 by 10 to the 8 meters per second. So we did a pretty good job there. Uh, let's calculate the error. So delta C over C will be equal to delta F over F plus delta lambda over lambda. Now, there's no error on the frequency which is given. So when it's not given, you take the last digit. But you see, it's going to be something like less than a half a percent compared to something like 15% for the wavelengths. So I can neglect it. This one will be much larger than this one. So then by rearranging this equation, I can just find the error on the speed of light, which is C by delta lambda over lambda. If I plug in the numbers, I get delta C equals 2.94 by 10 to the 8, multiplied by 0 0.02 divided by 0 0.12. So basically, this is dividing this number by 6. So delta C equals 2.94 divided by 6, 0.49 by 10 to the 8. So what is significant in uh, error is actually the first digit, so this one. So this is actually 0 0.5 by 10 to the 8, giving us a measured speed of light with our microwave in our cheese of 2.9 plus minus 0 0.5 by 10 to the 8 meters per second. Pretty cool, huh? Conclusion. Microwave ovens and sliced cheese are fantastic tools for experimental physics. I hope you enjoyed this video. So don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell. It really encourages me to create new videos. In the meantime, I'll see you soon for another episode of Physics Made Easy. Ciao.